The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by Nichols College. Learn, lead, succeed. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by Bay State Savings Bank, the law offices of Joseph J. Curriculum, Worcester State University, and Unibank. Coming up on the state finals edition of the Frenzy. In Division Three, the St. John's Pioneers square off against North Attleboro. In D7, the Valley Tech Beavers look for the upset against Mashpee. In Division Four, Neshoba goes for its second state title against Melrose. And in D6, Littleton battles Middlebro. It's the last Frenzy of the year. Who will be number one? The frenzy begins right now. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Hello everybody, the summer workouts, the captain's practices, the long days of August and the fall now behind us. The last high school football games of the season being played today and this weekend. Hello, I'm Andy Lacombe and this is a very special frenzy edition of our state championship coverage and we've got a good one for you four central massachusetts teams vying for state titles today we begin in division seven where valley tech they were on the upset tour and they've got an assistant coach derek yancic we chronicled it for you this week battling pancreatic cancer the beavers showing the same fight as their coach and this was the game of the day on saturday first quarter mashby they were huge up front Ben Bonnenberger, he's going to Colgate to play football with a sack to end of Valley Tech possession early. The Falcons drive, and on fourth and goal, Jacob Johnston pounds it in for six, add the two, eight to nothing, Mashpee, a two-time defending state champion. Second quarter, they're driving again. BBT's Jordan Amaro forcing the fumble. Tyler Truitt recovers, and the Beavers' defense comes up with a big play. Here comes BBT. Reese Hendricks airing it out to Brandon Lira with a great grab. That was third and long, and it was a big play for a first down. They cash in. Here's Hendricks throwing back. Out. This is a two-point conversion after he rushed for a score, and that tied the game at eight apiece. BBTD playing tough. Sam Nero, Ethan Blake getting to the quarterback for the sack. Late in the second quarter, Mashby's Johnston hitting Devon Ford for the touchdown. It's ruled a catch, somewhat controversial, 16-8 at halftime. Third quarter, Mashpee's Ford, breaking free again, he's a talent. Taking it to the house, 22 to eight, Falcons. Well, BBT could have just packed it in right there, but they didn't. Fourth quarter, they respond. Hendricks hitting a marrow for a touchdown. It's 22 to 14. And the Beavers going for two. Hendricks fires to Connor Christensen for the conversion, 22 to 16. Now late in the fourth quarter, Mashby trying to salt the game away the first down. The Beavers' D comes up with a stop. Aiden Fitzgerald recovers the fumble, so one last chance with a minute left. BBT throwing. Kendall Rose with a pick. Mashby's third straight state championship. They end a great run by the Beavers. 2016. I can't say enough about our kids. You know, they're, they're absolute fighters. They never gave up. Uh, you know, they, they, they gave us everything they had, which is all, all we can ask of them. And I'm so proud of these guys. Uh, Blackstone Valley Tech is on the state map, and, and uh, you know we're, 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 now that we've been here, we're going to work to get back here again. This is a, this was a great feeling. No question about it. Great job, Arch, and the entire staff at Valley Tech. St. John's and North Alabro D3 State Championship Friday night. Under the lights, Steve Buchalia to Coleman Drugach. That's good for a touchdown. Seven to nothing, Pioneers. North Alabro, Hockamock, taking it. And coming right back. The Hockamock League is tough. Chad Peterson, Zach DiMatteo for a touchdown. We're tied at seven. Colin Diso, big run up the middle. Great job by that O-line for the Pioneers. Opening up the hole for Diso the junior. And he's not done, capped the drive. Gets a nice block from Neil Nasuti. 14-7 St. John's after the first quarter. Two offenses just moving the football. Second quarter. Brennan McHugh for North Attleboro. The Red Rocketeers in for a touchdown, tied at 14. Peter Oliver hadn't played football in a couple of months. He's back and watch the hard charger going to Harvard. Fights his way in for a touchdown, 20 to 14, St. John's. 
with the lead. Chuck Cecil, hit of the night coming up. Andrew Del Brocco with a big stick. Dudes like to hit. St. John's can, they can bring it. 20 to 14 at the half, Pioneers. Third quarter, Deso through a huge hole. Nice moves here, a little shake and bake. Picking up a few extra yards. Doing things, and again, when you can run the football, sets up the pass. Eamon Dennis from Buchalia. And Eamon's just a talent, he gets himself in. Tack on a two point conversion, it's 28-14 Pioneers. North Attleboro, no quitting them. McHugh off tackle, 28-20 at that point. St. John's didn't have many third and longs in this game, but they faced one in a huge situation. Steve Buchalia, audibles on the play, and he hits John Brunel, the sophomore. 74 yards for the touchdown. 35-20, St. John's. North Attleboro, believe it or not, not done yet. A little double pass. Nick Ranieri to McHugh. They hit 35-26. St. John's defense making enough plays down the stretch. Pioneers, he and Shade and company making plays defensively. And St. John's would hold. 35-33 the final. The Pioneers state champions in Division Three. What a game, what a year. Perfect for St. John's. We did the things that championship teams have to do, and that's uh, have everybody be the best they can in their role, and then when the role changes, excel in that. So, you know, we got a great scout team, we got a great coaching staff, and a tremendous bunch of seniors that earned this championship from stem to stern. I can't express in words how happy I am right now. I was in tears earlier. Um, I hadn't played for almost two months, and then to come back now and play with my brothers, it's absolutely unreal feeling, so. It feels amazing. Seniors supported me all year. All credit goes out to them. Uh, it feels, just feels awesome. It's indescribable. It's the best feeling of my life. Um, we want to cement our legacy, and we did that today. All right, a couple of thoughts. St. John's offensively awesome. Really only stopped twice last night when they half ran out of them in the first half, and then they were trying to run out the clock in the fourth quarter. They scored when they needed to. Their offense moved the ball. And that big offensive line did a great job for Steve Buchalia and the wealth of weapons that he has. Blackstone Valley Tech, nobody thought they'd be where they were today, tonight, in a game with a chance to win coming down the stretch against a team that has won two consecutive state championships. Blackstone Valley Tech's on the map, no question about it. The Beavers are for real, and they've got a lot of guys coming back. And we're coming back with Neshoba and Littleton and more championship frenzy right after this. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is brought to you by The Sullivan Group, The Central Mass Safety Council, Nichols College, Verterra Nissan of Auburn, Interstate Battery, Worcester Railers Hockey Club, Holy Cross Athletics, Milford Federal, and Poochie's Fine Jewelry. All right, the Neshoba Chieftains looking for their second state title victory at Gillette, playing this morning against an undefeated team from Melrose, the Division IV State Finals. And here is Coach Tucker and his Chieftains ready to go. First quarter, Neshoba driving Kyle Hume, punishing run. Oh, Hume, he's not gonna go out of bounds without laying a little contact in there. Drive would stall though, deep in Melrose territory. And so the Red Raiders of Melrose strike first. Isaac Sade going up the gut for the score. It's seven to nothing. Late first half, Charles Stanton up top, looking to throw. Breeze Hill, the thrill is there for the pick for Neshoba. Chieftains D, stout. Melrose driving again, Sade bouncing off tackles. And a big gainer to the 16 of Neshoba. And it's that man again on the next uh, couple next play or so. It's the jet sweep, rumbling for the score. 14 to nothing, Melrose at that point. Fourth quarter we go. Melrose adding the insurance, Stanton with a QB sneak. Neshoba's season comes to an end. 21 nothing, Melrose are the D4 champs. I thought we, you know, our, our group came together and we were able to move the ball 
you know, at times, but, you know, you know, you just, it is what it is. You know, Melrose played tough today, obviously a, uh, you know, good football team, and, uh, you know, I credit those guys. They played hard. All right, this is Littleton and Middlebrough. First game of the day, D6 final. The Tigers, they've been there before several times. The Sachems from Middlebrough. Third trip for Littleton, and William Scott hits Mitchell Bowden for a big first down on the first drive, and they cap it with Luke Elliott, QB sneak. Tigers have a 6-0 lead, a 19-play, 9-plus minute drive for Littleton. Second quarter, here comes Middlebrough. Colin O'Brien, jet sweep, untouched, five-yard touchdown. We are tied at six. Littleton looking to answer in the second. Scott, the deep ball. Oh, Evan Lyons tip drill to himself. One-handed catch. A penalty, though, would stop that drive for the Tigers. Back comes Middlebrough. Evan Ward's hitting O'Brien in stride for the touchdown, 12 to six. And more from the quarterback from Middlebrough. Rolling out hits Harrison Lapierre. Lapierre breaks a tackle, and he is gone for the touchdown. Middlebrough up 20 to six at that point. Littleton answers, another QB sneak. Cut the lead down, that's Elliott going in. Cut it down to 20 to 12. Middlebrough though, simply too tough in this one. Their quarterback, he was outstanding. Middlebrough, your D6 state champion, 43 to 20. And in college football, Division II Super Region Final, Assumption falling to the number one seed, Indiana of Pennsylvania. Joe Kim had a pick six in this one. Cole Tracy, perfect from the field goal, field goal area. And Sam Blake, six catches and 77 yards. So their season comes to an end. Assumption falling to the number one seed today. Great season for Bob Chesney and his team. Neshoba always seems to be around. They're always going to be a contender with, uh, with Coach Tucker and his staff in that division and Littleton Mike Lynn at the beginning of the season another coach in that division in Central Mass says Littleton's the team to beat they weren't sure if they were Littleton did but they sure proved themselves and proved the other coach correct Littleton making it back to the state championship game great season for Central Mass football and there's a lot to still talk about so Kevin Shea and Jim Wilson join us next with their own unique perspective on the year. The Friday Night Football Frenzy is presented by Bay State Savings Bank, the law offices of Joseph J. Carigula, Worcester State University, Worcester Railers Hockey Club, and Unibank. Welcome back, everyone. Kevin Shea, Jim Wilson, sports editor for the Telegram and Gazette. We're going to do a little season wrap, wrap up here up. on Super Bowl Saturday. And first, talk about some of the teams that had great seasons that we didn't get to talk about a lot during the year. Uh, they're not playing in Super Bowls, but these are programs that really took big steps this year. And we want to certainly put some spotlight on the coaches and the kids. And beginning with Westboro, six and five, won three of their last four. And those three wins against Wachusett, Grafton, Algonquin. Three That's real huge. good programs. This Dave Tinglock did a phenomenal job with this crew this year. And you know what, Webby? We were saying all, all year how he's been you know, quietly under the radar, getting better every year. Coaches always talk about that three-year program when they take over a program. They want to you know, sort of identify the problems of year one and then you know, fix them year two and then execute year three. And that's exactly what happened. I'm not saying Mark Ellis and this crew did a bad job, but there you know, was a change of, change of voice there. And they sort of, you know, they're bringing people in. Westboro is, is a big, bigger school. You know, they, in Midwatch school, they're good. They're good in a lot of other sports. They want to get the athletes under the program. They did that. It sort of paid off this year. The seniors, if they started as sophomores, they, you know, they won, what, three years ago, they won three games. And they won two games. And they won three. So they only won eight games until this season when they right. won six. Right. That's huge. You get that winning tradition put back in that school, it yep. goes a long way. Those weights go up a lot easier in the offseason yep. now because they know that, hey, you know, coach is, you know, is selling something we're buying into. If you put in the effort, this is what comes out with it. You know, they're, they've always been a tough team to play. Every year, even, even the bad years, they always sneak a win over like a Wachusett yes. towards the end of the year. You're right. So they, you know, they're, they're never really blown out. No. You know, so they've always been competitive. So it's nice to see that program, even with a win over Algonquin on Thanksgiving. Uh, yes, you're on the so, modern. It's, and that's big, though, because they hadn't beaten Algonquin on Thanksgiving exactly. in years. So that goes to, it speaks to what you were saying about 
going into the offseason. Now there's a lot of enthusiasm in the weight room. Now guys see what it means to put in the extra half hour in the weight room to do squats, to do the, the deadlifts, to do all the, the lunges, the, the lifts that aren't fun, that are hard work, but they see how they pay off and how one or two plays can be a difference in a game. And you look at the offense, too, and what they did. Scored 42 against Wachusett, right. 26 against Grafton, 51 against Algonquin. It's impressive. And their only loss in their final four games was to Neshoba, a team that's Which, playing in Gillette Stadium. Exactly. So, you know, that, that's, a, that's a program that took huge, huge steps. And those, those wins you said every year, every year they rent the lights for one week. And exactly. they always seem to beat a, a, have a huge upset when they have the lights. They're going to get permanent lights in there soon. So look out. That combination with more kids in the program, uh, kids getting that taste of, of winning, right. and then getting lights in, playing on Friday nights. Everything's bigger on Friday nights. I mean, you saw last year with when Algonquin, when they went on to Justin McKay, they sort yep. of made that leap and they got into the playoffs. They made it to the Central Mass Final. But you saw that hard work with that program accomplished. You, you know, hopefully they can keep it up. Because I know Algonquin took a step back this year, but their winning attitude is still there in that school. And they, nobody wants to be a loser for, for many years. I mean, that's right. why I don't pick blowouts in my game, my, my picks every week. Right. Because they don't want to, you know, they know they're down, they're, tr they're trying hard. They don't want to hear some fat kids say they're going to lose by four touchdowns. <laughs> it's not, you know, it's, I know how it is. It's no, the right coaches want you to say that. The coaches. The co I, all the coaches want. I'm putting my kid through us, college. Don't pick us. Don't pick us. Don't because they I'm, all want to be I'm the underdogs. I'm putting my kid through college with all the money exactly. I get. Exactly. Don't Oxford. pick us. Oxford. Oxford's another program. Took a huge leap this year. Eight and three. They got Nico Murray, who's coming back, you know, the leading rusher in Central Massachusetts. There's a lot, and you look at this team, and this is a team that has eighth graders on the varsity, freshmen that are playing on the varsity, sophomores. You don't, you don't win over a varsity season with freshmen and sophomores. You just don't. You, you win with seniors, and St. John's has proven that with the 26 uh, kids in the senior class versus five that they had a year ago. But this is a program that has really taken some strides, eight and three, and now wait another year to these sophomores right. become juniors these juniors become seniors and even some of those freshmen become sophomores and put on an extra 20 pounds grow a couple more inches and have that taste of winning have exactly. that confidence i mean this team they, have, they were six and six in 2010 before that there was their first winning record since 2000. i mean that's so that's been you know, you're watching older brothers and uncles and things yeah. like that they're just hard you know, I've, I've had people actually ask me every year, is Oxford feeling a team this year? Right. I mean, so uh, to have this to have this team make the leap, their schedule, we said it earlier in the, in the show a couple weeks ago, they, they, their schedule was redone, so they're playing a little bit with something more in line. They're not playing, you know, the, the Shepherd Hills and the Tantasquas and those, those big, right. big swickle monsters every week. They can they have a winnable schedule. They were able to get put that put together the eight wins. You know, they, they didn't get the, tie, the playoffs, but that's fine, because I think they just want to rebuild. They want right. to take that next step. And like you said, like with Westboro, Next year, they, what's what they can build on? Right, and that's it's perfect. They have that winning attitude. Know these kids can win right. with the program they have now, and do the do the work in the off season. That's gonna go a long way. And that's what you do is now you have more kids coming out for the program because right. they won. You have more kids staying with the program because they won. When teams are consistently, you get a two win season, a three win season. You get kids quitting mid season, and you have a lot of kids that will say, "Nah, I don't want to go out for it. I'm just gonna focus on my winter sport or my spring sport because." Football, we've said, football's not fun to practice. It's no. hard work. It's the only sport out there. I mean, basketball, baseball, lacrosse, hockey, those are sports that are fun to practice. Football's not fun to practice. It's hard work. So if you're going all week long and you're working six days for that one game and you lose consistently, it's very demoralizing. So great leap for them. Fitchburg is another Fitchburg. team. Fitchburg won four of their last five. And, of course, the biggest one. They beat Lemonster on Thanksgiving for the first time in a long time. That is the game in that town. They now have bragging rights for a year in the two towns. That's going to get the groundswell of support, too. Now more kids want to be involved with it. Everyone wants to be around a winner, and they had a great atmosphere on Thanksgiving. Exactly. I was worried about Fitchburg when they got rid of Dan Walker. I thought, you know, I thought he was doing a good job with the program. But when they brought in Tom DiGeronimo, and then Charlie Raff comes out to yep. help out, that animal psychopath is just exactly the kind of person <laughs> you need in that program to bang the drum and ring the bell, get the kids in the weight room and fire them all up. He's fantastic for that program. I think I think Fitchburg made the leap this year. Sal Figueroa, I think he had about two, you know, 1,977 yeah. yards this year. He's amazing. Huge. He's, Huge. He's, and he was he, a beast on Thanksgiving. Oh, he's going like you run for 300 yards like it's nothing. Yeah, the last month of the season, he carried that team. He on turned into like a Madden creative player for he the last was, month of the season. He was unbelievable. And really created a lot of those wins. Made our super team. I think he's you know a fantastic guy to have. And that, like I said, that program exactly what we said about the other two teams. Yep. They have that winning attitude back in Fitchburg, and look out because once that program gets rolling and gets those kids in.
season that they're tough to stop. They're a dynasty waiting to happen. No, you're right about that. And we're going to get to a couple of the teams, too, that had good seasons and took some leaps. But we want to get to St. John's because of the records that the Pioneers oh. are putting up this year. I mean, and, and again, and we've said, Speaking you and I have said this off, off camera. It's one thing to be the favorite every week, but you still have to go win. And everyone, you're everyone's Super Bowl every week. And they did it. They kept winning. Steve Bacalia, uh, over well over 3,000 yards passing. Record holder. 42 touchdowns. This is good. I mean, to, to put it in perspective here, as you, you're going to tell us about the records. We haven't seen this in central Massachusetts and doing it at the highest level, not doing it against programs that are first or second year programs. Especially when Peter Oliver went out with an ankle injury. Right. And then realized that, okay, now there's no secret what they're going to do. They can run the ball a little bit with Byers and those guys, but their first option now is going to be pass. Right. And so now they can just put people back in the, you know, back and wait in coverage. He's, he's seeing those coverages, he's finding the open guys, he's throwing about 300 yards a game. It's insane what this guy's been able to do for that team with the schedule they play. And when you talk to other coaches and, and other players and other teams, they all say the same thing. You, it's pick your poison. You, first of all, if you want to try to blitz him to get pressure on him, he's so good at his pre-snap and post-snap reads. He'll find the hot receiver, he'll hit him every time. I've said this time and time again, I don't think I've ever seen him throw a ball that was an incomplete pass because he missed his receiver. Now, if he throws an incompletion, of the games I've seen, I've seen a bunch of them, it hit the receiver in the hands or the shoulder pads or the helmet. His balls are unbelievable. Like when you're talking about the deep ball, and you'll see bracket coverage. Right. There's a defender, there's a safety over the top, there's a cornerback right underneath. He drops it right down the chimney in between two defenders. He, he can make every single throw on the field. He's so impressive. He's completed 192 of 267 passes. That's an insane completion no, ratio. It's unbelievable. And he's thrown, he's thrown for 300, 300, uh, 3,374 yards. That's a central match record already. He has one game left to play. He's thrown for 42 touchdowns. That ties Ryan Malkowski's record from last year. He still has a game to play. Right. I mean, this kid, he's right there for the completion record. He's, he's, if he has a good game on Friday, he's going he's gonna to do that one. He's been putting up incredible numbers. I mean, yeah. This offense has been, been insane. Bill Ballou looked up a record earlier. He said St. John's could become the highest scoring team in state history. The best available info, because the MIA is, they don't, they, they rather charge $17 for right. park at a game rather than look up state records. <laughs> but they have, they, yes. they have, Everett scored 600 points in 1914. Because speaking of psychopaths, Baloo is just a microfilm psychopath. <laughs> he sees like a Titanic sunk, but Everett scored 600 points in 1914. He's fine with I that. St. John's has 553 with one more game. So, if they so they're going to be the highest points, scoring team in the state or close to it in state history. Incredible. We're out of time, Willie, again. Nine minutes. It is crazy. Up with this? We, we, need, we need a half an go hour. Go online for Bye. more. For Jim Wilson, I'm Kevin Shea. Thanks for watching all season long. Thanks, guys. All right, man of the match time. I'm giving them to two quarterbacks. Steve Buccellia, not just because he broke just about every Central Mass quarterbacking record, but just alone for his call and his audible on the touchdown, the game-winning touchdown, the long strike to Jay Brunel. And for Reese Hendricks, as tough as nails a quarterback as you could find, guiding his Valley Tech team to a battle with Mashby today. Remember, broken collarbone, he's back, he's running the football, he's throwing it. Reese Hendricks is a man of the match. All right, coming up, we transition to basketball season. College basketball, live broadcast, Boston College and Holy Cross women's hoops. Bill Gibbons trying to upset the Eagles at home. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock. Thanks to all the coaches, student athletes, families, all your support all season long, letting us into your living rooms, letting us into your locker rooms, and letting us do this job that we love. Thanks so much from the Friends of